Hello friends and welcome to Zionville. Go with the flow. Let's bow for a word of prayer as we begin. Our great God and our Heavenly Father, we do thank thee for this opportunity again to come to your word to study. And today, such an important passage, it's right upon us. Please be with me as I speak and be with those listening to understand this. And Lord, if there's any Catholic friends here, help them to understand it. I know it's especially tough for them to hear this. But your word says it. We must teach it. We want to see people saved for the kingdom. We thank thee now and give you glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Go with the flow. And all the world wandered after the beast. Revelation 13, 3. I can tell you right now that this is a flow you don't want to go with. It will be made up of people who have no true spiritual compass, who follow an imposter. And eventually, when they wake up to that fact, it will be too late for them. Probation will have closed, the time allotted by the Lord when everybody can repent of their sins and follow Jesus, the Son of God, fully by coming out of Babylon, the confusion of the churches, and out of the world, living holy lives at last. No more sinning for them. But those who go with the flow of Revelation 13, 3 will be lost. And upon probation's close, those who have, by their own stubborn choice, those who have not come to Christ, will then be a part of this. These shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Revelation 17, 16. They will be so incensed at being deceived by her that they will destroy her holdings and her priests worldwide. Many of these people will have been lifelong adherents to her brand of Christianity, only to find out that it is paganism rebranded, totally useless in the salvation of sinners. God cannot accept it, not from Catholics, not from Protestants, not from anybody. Did you ever have a relationship suddenly turn sour? The love of your life suddenly become hateful in your sight, so much so that it would do her harm? That's what happens here. Impossible, some say. Happens all the time, say others. But understand that this is not a personal relationship between merely two people, no. Rather, this is the relationship growing deeper day by day right now between billions of people and the Scarlet Woman of Revelation 17. There is coming a time, according to Bible prophecy, when this relationship gone sour will happen on a worldwide scale, as I've mentioned. And when the Word of God says it, you can bank on it. And yes, it will be indeed a beastly change made by the people of earth. But just who is this scarlet woman? And how does she come to this pass? To that we now turn. The Bible says... And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And, her pot, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration, wonderment, amazement. Revelation 17, 4 to 6. The Apostle John, while in exile on the island of Patmos as punishment for his faith, had this amazing view of what has become known to Bible students and scholars alike as the Scarlet Woman. What follows is a very tough study for most people. But please remember that God is describing a particular religious system here, which he hates, not the people caught up in it unawares at this point, whom he loves. Yes, every one of them he loves, so much so that he calls them out of that system right now, folks. Come on out. Before probation for mankind closes and the destruction falls, Revelation 18 and verse 4. Here now is the prophetic breakdown of Revelation 17, 4 to 6. Arrayed in purple and scarlet color, the distinctive colors of the cardinal's robes representative of the hierarchy, the leadership. Decked with gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, jewels are literally everywhere. But the Son of Man, that's Jesus, had not where to lay his head when he was on earth. Matthew 8, verse 20 and Luke 9, 58. She has a golden cup in her hand, 
a symbol of the chalice used in the Mass, their central form of worship from which all else flows, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, Revelation 17, 2. The fornication here spoken of is spiritual fornication. That is, they have gone after pagan doctrines and practices held by the nations and mixed them with some biblical truth, thus creating a pagan monstrosity of a religion which they call Christianity. Their marriage has long ago been disannulled by God. The good news is that he has saved many attached to it in spite of it over the centuries. But now he calls all to come out of her, my people, Revelation 18.4, for the Lord God is about to pour out his wrath on that system. And anybody still in her or with her, Catholics, Protestants, whomever, all will be destroyed with her and her teachings, never to rise again. All that is sinful will be over. Please read Nahum chapter 1 and verse 9. Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. With the kings of the earth, verse 17, too, Christ is the husband to his church, not pagan counterfeits. That is, the doctrine she has gotten from the paganism of the nations in lieu of the pure doctrines of Scripture which she despises. A name written on her forehead, the frontal lobe of the brain, the seat of conscious thought, drive, and personality, hence her raison d'etre, is a deeply embedded mindset. And here it is. Mystery, Babylon the Great. Her origins are truly from the great mystery religions of history, whose fountainhead was Babylon of old time, the original Babylon of Nimrod and Semiramis, his mother and wife. The origin of all the pagan mystery religions was in them. Some truth mixed with a lot of error, such as Roman Catholicism today. The mother of harlots. She has daughters, the Protestant churches, who never completed the Reformation and have since gone backwards, right back into the arms of Mother Rome. This is happening with ever-increasing speed as so-called Protestants visit the Vatican. These churches are part and parcel of Babylon the Great at the end, along with the Mother Church. All the Protestant churches have been affected in some major ways by the Babylonian apostasy today. This is the one world religious movement called the ecumenical movement. And abominations of the earth. These are the idols of the nations, the statues, doctrines, and practices formed by fallen man on this earth, rather than the pure doctrines taught by our Heavenly Father, known and kept throughout the universe of heaven, and sent to us by His Holy Spirit-inspired prophets. These they do not want. They are drunken with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus. Her long history of torture and death to anyone who disagrees with her is a clear sign of her satanic nature and the origin of her apostasy. How they can reconcile those things with the biblical picture of prophets, apostles, and Christ himself never torturing, mistreating, or killing anyone who disagreed with them simply shows where the power of Rome really comes from. And the worst is yet to come, I'm afraid. Be strong in Jesus. Now again, please don't misunderstand me. While it is obvious to the honest of heart that this passage can refer to only one entity in the history of this world, the Roman Catholic Church, I am not in any way referring to the Catholic people themselves. Like the Lord, I love the Catholic people. And in fact, I was born and raised a Roman Catholic. My grandfather was a priest in the Eastern Rite, where they can marry. I never had an axe to grind. My Catholic upbringing was very positive. No, God's warnings here and elsewhere in the prophetic scriptures are a strong warning against the system of deception forged over many centuries of Christian history by the papacy. It is the in place of Christ power, the Antichrist, singular, the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4. Antichrist means precisely that in the Greek, in place of Christ. And the fact is, as I'm sure you are aware, is that nobody can put themselves or anyone else in place of Christ. He is so indispensable that today he comes to us by his spirit while he ministers for us physically in the heavenly sanctuary. We need him every moment. But the popes have blasphemed in this matter for centuries by putting themselves in place of Christ and the Father. You can look up all the citations. 
But most people today, Catholic or not, do not understand this. Instead, they are arrested by the charm given off by the modern globe-trotting popes, which we have seen from John Paul II to Francis. The world is in love with the papacy, and thus our opening scripture is now constantly fulfilling. And all the world wondered after the beast, Revelation 13.3. Everybody today, it seems, loves the pontiff or bridge builder. But the Apostle Paul tells us that there is only one mediator or bridge builder between God the Father and mankind, and he is no mere earthling like the popes are, but rather the man from heaven, Christ Jesus. Please read 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, and let it sink in. It is him we are to love by keeping his commandments. If ye love me, keep my commandments, John 14 and verse 15 not man's. The popes are leading the world down the garden path and in the process are providing themselves as the vehicle through whom Satan will, for a short time after his own appearance impersonating Christ, achieve his objective of being worshipped by all. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the hearts of the stars of God. This is Satan speaking. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 13, and 14. That is his desire. And all will worship him. Well, nearly all. The final commandment-keeping remnant of God, now forming, will not worship him, come what may. You and I want to be a part of that body, the church triumphant, believe me. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Change your lives. Christ will help you. I must as well. God is no respecter of persons, Acts 10.34. But anyone who fears God and lives the righteous life is accepted of him. This is, a, this is good news once you have accepted the gospel. Jesus died for you, so what are you waiting for? But what about those who today worship the Pope and his mentor, and those who will yet do so in the near future when Satan tightens his noose in the closing scenes of this earth's history. What will become of them? Understand this. To worship is to give worth to something or someone. It's worth-ship. Those who land on the papal side in the final battle and stay there will, first of all, destroy the hierarchy and all that pertains to it, as our other opening scripture also makes clear. These shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Revelation 17, 16. This will be when they finally find out that they have been had. They will finally believe the message preached by the remnant. But probation having closed, it will then be too late. Along with those who ran the system they previously loved so much, instead of having the love of the truth that they might be saved, 2 Thessalonians 2.10, they will suffer destruction in the lake of fire when the crust of the earth burns at the very end. This is hellfire, which is not burning as yet. So people scoff. Don't make that mistake. Believe God. So there are two destinies, two rewards. First, note the reward of the righteous, those who obey God and Christ is their savior, as their Savior and Lord, not some human pretender in a religious costume. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city, Revelation 22:14. That's all ten of them as written, including the fourth, the seventh-day Sabbath. No changes. Then note the reward of the wicked, the lost, the unsaved, etc. For without, that is outside the city after it lands on earth, without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, Revelation 22:15. These are, of course, violators of the Ten Commandments. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, encompassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Revelation 20, verses 9 and 10. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verses 14 and 15. Gone forever are the breakers of God's commandments. Don't let anyone lead you astray. 
God's commandments, to be righteous and saved, is to keep them. That is not legalism. It is salvation. It brings eternal life with the Father and His Son also forever, and all of it is based on the blood of Jesus shed on Calvary. Hallelujah. The choice is entirely yours. I hope and pray you will make the right one starting today. For a certainty, Jesus is coming soon. Maranatha.